I'd like to uh, call the Skagit Transit Board of Directors meeting to order. Uh, would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, if I could get a hand with the roll call of the board members. Uh, Commissioner Browning? Here. Commissioner Janicki? Here. Commissioner Wieson? Here. Mayor Donovan? Uh, was online. Present. Online. There he is. Mayor Johnson? Here. Mayor Miller? Here. Mayor Sexton? Here. Councilperson Stavik? Here. Councilperson Vanderstoep? Judy Jones? And Colleen Kennedy? Son Jensen sitting in for Colleen Kennedy today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item four is uh, public comment. Do we have any uh, written comments? And how about any public comment here? We're online. Hello. Oh, okay. So I have a raised hand. I didn't see the hand raised, but uh... I'm having trouble with my system. This is Joe Kunzler, Mr. Chairman. Okay. So go, go go ahead. Uh, first, I understand Brad Lindler is leaving Skagit Transit, and I just want to wish him well. Um, it was a pleasure working with him most of the past, almost all the past decade. Uh, the second thing is, is I was formerly on the CAC, and I understand you have a bylaws update. Can you please make sure that gets passed today? Because I, uh, I used to be on the CAC, and sometimes I would, you know, I would have to dedicate three or four hours, extra hours, to attend and participate only to find we didn't have a quorum uh, once I showed up. So making sure that we have some kind of a mechanism to ensure that the CAC has a quorum is important to the future of the CAC and Skagit Transit. I want to thank all of you for your public service and thank you for taking my comments and prompt you like this. Okay, thank you. Any other uh, public comments? Okay, we'll move on to our consent agenda. So consent agenda items A through H. And again, uh, we've included all that this has been distributed to all the board members. So hopefully you've had a chance to look at those. And if there are any items that you wish to pull off, please let me know. If not, I'll entertain a motion uh, for the consent agenda. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda items. I'll second. Hey, a motion by Mayor Sexton, a second by Mayor Johnson to approve the consent agenda items A through H. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we're on to item six. These are uh, full discussion action items, and we'll start with uh, item A, approve federal fiscal year 2023 FTA bus and bus facilities uh, wash dot pass through award. And uh, Crystal. Yes, good morning, everyone. Um, this is for, as Mayor Miller said, the FTA bus and bus facilities wash dot pass through grant award CFDA 20.526 for $106,818. Skagit Transit has been awarded $106,818 in fiscal year 23 FTA 5339 funding passed through uh, Washington State of Department of Transportation. The funds will assist in developing 100% design plans for the construction of a small remodel of Skagit Station for the purpose of adding employee-only restrooms at the Skagit Station. <clears throat> Skagit's on-call Skagit Transit's on-call engineering contract will be utilized to design restrooms in an area with no public access, access rather, for the purpose of providing privacy to our employees when taking needed breaks during their shifts. This project has a shared cost ratio of 80-20. The budget, budget impact would be 20% of the project cost, and which will be funded by local funds. Staff recommends the board approve the receipt of grant award and the project assigned to funding the funding and authorizes CEO to ex execute the grant agreement. Hey, any uh, questions on this one? Mr. Jensen. Yeah. Yeah, I would just encourage you guys to approve it. I think it's very needed for the 
I was to have that. And also, if I may add, I think that you should encourage that the bathroom we used to have would be opened up onto that has been facilitated. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? Motions, perhaps? I make a motion to approve the grant award as presented. Second that. Hey, a motion by Mayor Sexton and a second by Commissioner Wieson to approve uh, the uh, pass-through award as presented. Any additional discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 6B, uh, approval of uh, vehicle donation. Crystal. Thank you, Mayor Miller. Um, I received an email just minutes ago from um, George Kosovich asking us to pull that one right now. I, apparently, they need to um, figure out some logis logistics before they can accept that. So please um, remove that one from today's agenda. Okay. We'll uh, move on to item 6C. Uh, this is uh, to approve a contract for financial reporting system with uh, community brands. Crystal. Okay. This this one is a little confusing, so I'm just going to read the board report and then I will um, give a little bit of the history. Um, approved contract 24-13 for financial reporting system with community brands. Um, contract 06-24 for financial reporting system, a bill at MIP expired, and that actually probably should say SAGE, expired on November 30th of 2011. Skagit Transit has been authorizing one year renewal since 2012 without proper board approval. Around 2015, the company who owned the software Sage, which was um, Clark Newber, uh, became a bill at MIP. Staff requests approval of contract 24-13 with community brands, a bill at MIP retroactive to 2015 in perpetuity for the purpose of software maintenance with the not to exceed amount of $200,000. This is a proprietary software and will th therefore be a sole source. So before I ask for the board to approve, um, what happened when this contract came up for renewal, we discovered that um, Skagit Trans Transit entered into a contract with Clark Newber in 2006. 2006. It was a one year for our financial system, Sage. It was a one year contract with four one year option renewals that expired at the end of 2011. At the end of 2011, Skagit Transit did not bring this contract back to the board for renewal. And we have since then just been authorizing one year renewals without proper board authorization. In the interim, at some point, Clark Newer. Well, in the interim, Sage became Abella, and then Clark Newer sold um, that product to community brands. So not only have we been um, paying on a contract that expired, we've been paying on a contract that was sold to someone else, and the contract, the original contract did not authorize, um, it was not transferable. So we should have brought this back to the board back in 2015. Um, before I ask for approval, is there any questions on that? Because it was quite confusing as we started to to drive down this path and figure out what happened. Yeah, and, it, and, and at the same time, of course, this program is essential for uh, operations. Yes, of course. We um, we ended up, not, I ended up not um, authorizing the last renewal contract because it was not a valid contract and they shut our system down. And yeah. Chris Argle is in the room, he can attest to that. We were having issues getting W-2s and such out. So I ended up signing the, the renewal contract for 2024. Um, and I did seek legal advice on this. Our, this, is, this is exactly the way that our um, contract attorney recommended that we um, handle this, just to give the board the historical and then go back and retroactively get it approved so that there's um, a history kind of of what happened with this contract. Crystal, your uh, your explanation makes tons of sense to me. So this is Peter. I move to approve. Thank you. you can can I just ask you to hold off on a motion for a second? I, I just want to make a comment. Um, the uh, I I'm thinking that this needs to be a two part motion because in our world, if we bypass um, open bidding and go to sole source, that is a that motion has to be made by the board and accepted and and the contract has to be approved so it's it's two different steps maybe could be combined into one motion but the fact that we are approving a sole source for the community brands formerly known as sage software should be at least part of that 
motion. Yeah, let me retract my motion my motion right now. So let's I think two would make me more comfortable. Two separate motions. Chair, does that make Yeah, the, the first one for uh, sole sourcing uh, this and then uh, we'll entertain another motion for approving the contract. Okay, so I'll make the motion. Oh, go ahead. Well, I just got go ahead. Just uh, a, a quick question on this. Is are we renewing this every year because it's like a subscription and you're paying each year on this software? It is a software renewal that we renew every year. And um, the reason that I asked for it in perpetuity instead of um, putting an end date on it is we're hoping this year to be able to go out for to hire a contractor to be able to come in and tell us um, what system we should be using, not only for a financial system, but for an HRIS system. But to answer your question, yes, it is a subscription renewal um, that we renew every year. So is it, I mean, are you renewing this at $200,000 or not to exceed 200000 each year? No, that's just a maximum. And if we go, um, if we exceed the 200,000, we would come back for for um, um, an additional approval. We've already spent some of that money and I don't have the notes in front of me. They're at home and or at work rather on my office, but we've already spent some of that $200,000. Um, the actual annual contract cost us right around sixteen or $17,000 per year. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the future plan is that might not necessarily be a sole source, but for for what we're using now, we have to sole source it. So, and obviously, right. we're already using it. So, but I will entertain a motion for sole source. And yeah, I just had a question also with that language there, retroactive to twenty fifteen in perpetuity. I'm not comfortable signing something good for the next thousand years. So, I mean, that, that's what you're saying there. And I just don't think that's right, but that's my own thought on it. And maybe perpetuity is not the uh, word that we're looking for. It's more historically, because uh, we're try trying to clean, uh, the staff is trying to clean up uh, an oversight with the contract that is required in place to provide financial reporting, period. And then the next step is to be at least moving forward for a sh relatively short period of time. Well, let me suggest then let's, uh, I would like to make a motion to approve the sole set source um, company and with a, a with a 10 year to be, de to be re-examined at every at 10 years. 2000. Hmm. Because we don't know when. Yeah. Okay, let's just approve the sole source. A motion to approve the sole source. Second. Okay, a motion by uh, uh, um, Commissioner Browning, a second by Commissioner Janicki to approve the sole source uh, with uh, community brands for the financial software. Perfect. That, any additional discussion? Sounds like a question here, Mr. Jensen. I'm kind of like, if I was that company that was listening to this board meeting, my price would go up next year. But I, I think going out 10 years, it doesn't make any sense. Well, it's got to be from, correct me if I'm wrong, this is a retroactive contract, basically from 2015 forward. So 10 years correct. minimum, we have to have it in place. Correct. And the other, the option to renew the ability for us to renew doesn't mean that we are going to renew right. because we are going to be looking for a different software. So, and it goes up every year. <laughs> Unfortunately, the history on, on the renewal is that it goes up every year. Um, what is the idea of increasing the fine over time? Because they do have a scale 20. You think, uh, so I, I'm not sure who's speaking and I can't quite hear you. Or was that an echo? Okay. So Chris, why can't we bring it forward every every year? Um, part of it, I'm, I'm just to make sure that I heard you right, is whether or not we bring it to the board each year. Mm -hmm. um, part of that is, is that we don't, we would like to not be inundating the board with contract renewals every year. Um, part of it is just so we're not having to present 10 plus contracts as they come up for renewal. Um, we were thinking about time 
to the board because we know that Merck that's kind of what led us to the situation we're in right now that not coming to the board each year is so um that is yeah mm -hmm. uh, but part of the challenge i think is staff time going on rfp every year for some of these contracts would be there is also some of that well. too. Yeah. so yeah. well certainly i know what what our financial software is uh, that's a 10-year uh program I, I don't think any of your other other jurisdictions are changing their financial software reporting every year no that, that would no, be no. insane it's something that's protective of the agency as well you know what you're going to pay for you know the next three four five years however long you're you're, you're going to go with it uh, but i share commissioner weeson's concern about the word perpetuity so um Commissioner well, Browning, would it make you feel better if we just did it till, say, 2025? And because, like I said, we're hoping to go to hire a consultant sometime this year to assess our financial um, software anyways. I would be happy with that. Yes. Yeah. So that I guess the so the sole sourcing motion that I have on the table with uh, Commissioner Browning and Commissioner Janicki, uh amend that to be uh, till 2025. That would be perfect. That, that makes sense. That would apply for this, this contract. So. That would also applies. But we can take that. And the sorry. retroactive piece, yes. Yeah. Okay. So does the board understand that and ready to vote on that? Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I, I I believe we need to take up the actual approval of the contract um, with uh, community brands. Is that how you understand it, Crystal? Yes. Okay. All right, questions? And that's retroactive at least through potentially to 2025. Right. Okay, so can I get a motion uh, for for that approval of the contract with Community Brands retroactive twenty fifteen uh, uh, to twenty twenty five, not to exceed two hundred thousand. I shall move. Second. Okay, motion by Commissioner Weeson, second by Mayor Sexton, uh, to approve uh, the contract uh, with Community Brands. From 2015 to 2025, not to exceed 200,000. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, good. Uh, again, I think we're moving in the right direction, cleaning up these contracts. All right. Next up is 6D, approved non employee travel policy amendment. Crystal. Thank you. And on the, the contracts, I would like to tell this board that that's going to be the last one that we're going to bring to you like this, but likely not. As contracts come up for a renewal, we're doing audits. And um, if we see other situations like this, we'll be bringing them to the board as well. Okay, on to the next one. Approve the non-employee travel policy amendment. At the January board meeting, the board approved a policy for non-employee travel reimbursement for the purposes of recruitment activities. Since then, staff has become has come across a situation that was not addressed in the original policy. A candidate for employment was offered and accepted a position that lives outside of the PTBA and will need to stay in a hotel within the PTBA while they are in the process of moving. Our employee travel policy does not allow for reimbursements of hotel within the PTBA. An amendment to the policy has been proposed to include hotel to include hotel reimbursements within the PTBA for situations like this where future employees who have accepted a position must stay in a hotel before their hire date and through onboarding not to exceed three nights in a hotel. And again, this is really just for the purpose of getting um, this particular employee and future employees through recruitment. Uh, staff recommends the board approve an amendment to the non-employee travel reimbursement policy. Questions? Okay. Uh, and again, uh, this is a, a little bit ahead. I know we have got the governance uh, committee that's going to look at overall policies and bylaws, but there, this is one is uh, in particular driving uh, a current employee that uh, we're trying to recruit, as I understand it. Correct. All right. Looking for a motion then. I make a motion to approve the non employee travel policy amendment. Second. 
Motion by Mayor Saxon, second by uh, Commissioner Janicki, I believe, to approve the non-employee travel policy amendment. Additional discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. On to 6F, approve pass and Novus migration project. Crystal. Um, I think we skipped E for oh, the CEC. Sorry. sorry, approve CEAC bylaws revision. E. Thank you. Good catch. Thank you. This is to approve the CAC bylaws revision. The bylaws of Skagit Transit CAC have been reviewed and revised by the committee. This revision includes minor adjustments to the code of conduct in other administrative areas, establishes an attendance standard to maintain quorum at meetings. At its February meeting, the CAC moved to revise the bylaws. A copy of the bylaws is included in the board packet that shows the modifications. And for the board's convenience, we included a red line and a clean version. And just so the board knows, this was reviewed by um, our contract attorney as well. Staff recommend approving the CAC bylaw changes. Any questions, comments? All right, uh, entertain a motion. I'll move to approve the CAC bylaw changes as recommended. Second. Okay, a motion by uh, Commissioner Wieson, a second by Mayor Sexton to approve uh, CAC bylaw revisions. Additional discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 The opposed? Motion carries. All right, now 6F. Approve pass and Novus migration project. Crystal. Thank you. The IT department has finalized plans for the migration from our current pass system, which is um, Trapeze, tra Trapeze product, to the more advanced and efficient Novus system. This migration encompasses several key components, including Novus DR, Novus FFR, passenger portal notifications, and Ranger, providing a comprehensive upgrade to our paratransit scheduling and dispatching capabilities. The co total cost for this project has been planned and is included in our 2024 capital projects budget approved earlier this year, by, last year rather, by the board. The financial details are as follows. Total project cost $96,300. For system components, license services, and hardware installation and software maintenance costs for one year is $40,041, ensuring continued support and operational assistance efficiency. Rather, the approved budget for this project was $150,000, but the cost is coming in at $148,100. This migration. Migration is crucial for enhancing our service delivery through improved system reliability, enhanced passenger experience, and implementation of our rides on demand routes. This pa the path to Novus migration aligns with our strategic goals of leveraging technology for better service delivery and operational excellence. Staff recommends the Board of Directors approve pass to, the Pass to Novus migration project. This project is not only within our 2024 capital projects budget, but is also a significant step towards modernizing our operations without any negative impact to our current budget. All right, there's sure there's some technical details in here, but any uh, questions? Well, you know, I would upgrade the yeah, I, I, okay. So the question, I was thinking it myself, but uh, Mr. Jensen uh, said it, and I'll repeat it. Uh, kind of, kind of. What are the what are the high a couple of highlights? Uh, how does this how does this enhance the uh, service? Maybe. Uh, so uh, for Novus, it's um, less client heavy, so we're not installing software on the actual workstations. So as far as our coop planning and keeping resiliency of our operational status for our dispatch. This really fits in with that because it's a single server architecture and all the clients reach out to it like a website. Um, and then there's also our demand response rides, rides on demand up in concrete that right now is kind of crippled on the operational side because we're using pass, which wasn't designed for that particular scenario. Um, so in investigating how we make that scenario better, Novus kept coming up as one of the solutions that TripSpark offers. Um, our first glance at it looked like a very streamlined interface for dispatch. So there's not a lot of buttons and all the extra stuff that they don't normally use. We compare that down to just scheduling for schedulers 
dispatching for dispatchers. Um, so it has a better workflow with all of their other products and it integrates um, with a newer um, notification system, which takes some of the server infrastructure that we have to maintain off of our load. The primary users of the system are dispatchers. Yes, dispatchers, but with our passenger portal, our passengers also utilize that in order to make rides and then our rides on demand up in concrete. So the passenger side is more of a website and mobile app version or integration and then dispatch, yes. So the ranger side for drivers would stay relatively the same. So there's relatively no difference for the drivers. Any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. So on this Novus thing, how long do you think you're currently with this pass system now, right? You're you're asking how long we've had pass? Well, no, you you have this pass and you're going to move over to this Novus. Program. Yes. Yeah. How long do you think this transition? Like you're telling me about an app and a website that maybe customers would use. I could see that. Okay, you're switching over stuff. Sometimes when there's a lot of glitches. And yeah, the, like good that. questions. Um, the passenger portal is already in place. So Novus will bolt right into the passenger portal we currently have. And there is a migration path that they have. So uh, as soon as we execute the contract with TripSpark, we have about a two to three month discovery process. After that, we have a, a pilot or a test implementation of the server. So we'll run both systems side by side and compare if one is like not performing the way we need it to, then we can go back to developers and work out those kinks. The plan is to have it completely in place and operational by January of 2025. And Chris, we're going to run it. Um, we're going to bo run both systems for a while until we are sure that the new system is fully functional, correct? Yes. On the production level, we probably won't run both of them at the same time. But in a test phase, we will have rangers on the new Novus system and we'll be able to see manifests being populated and verify that everything works as it needs to and then plan like kind of a, a pilot with a couple coaches, make sure they work in production and then just flip it all over. Um, the details of where our, our tipping point is to go from pass all the way over to Novus is unknown at this time, but will be discovered during the uh, discovery phase of the project. All right, anything else? I'm looking for a motion then. I move to approve the pass to Novus migration project. Second. A motion by Commissioner Wieson, a second by Mayor Donovan to approve the pass to Novus migration project. Additional discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Uh, item 6G, approved June 2024 meeting date change. Okay. Crystal. June 9th. Thank you. June 19th is recognized as the federal holiday Juneteenth and as a holiday for scheduled transit. In 2024, this date falls on a regularly scheduled board meeting date. The date of this board meeting, meeting will need to be changed to an alternate date within the month of June. Staff is requesting the board take a vote on a new date for this meeting. Staff recommends the board approve a change to the June 2024 meeting date and vote on an alternate date. No, and I, I thought there was going to be a recommended date in there too, but well, we could do that, but you guys yeah. all, it's its tough to get you guys all at the same time. Yeah. All right. So prob my my guess is most of the board, it would be a Wednesday, uh, it would be moving the Wednesday, but I'm also thinking about the other meetings that are the other boards and where we are there. So that could be a little bit of a challenge knowing that we have uh, SCOG. So there isn't a SCOG meeting in June because that's a May meeting. And so the other meeting is, help help me out. Then. Yeah. All right, probably should have spent a little more time figuring this, this one out. Uh, any suggestions so far? Yeah, that, I think I think maybe we don't have to come up with an answer uh, at this meeting, but if we do a doodle poll to try to figure okay. that out. 
We can do that. Laura, can you do a survey monkey to find a couple of dates? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I know that's really challenging. And if, the good but, news is that we brought it to you really mm -hmm. early. So there's time to figure that out. Yeah. And I think the other boards haven't figured that out yet either. So well, we're leading the way. Good, good on us. Okay. So we'll uh, table that one and uh, do a work a doodle poll or whatever poll you use. Okay, that's it for the uh, action items. We're on to item seven, which is 7A CEO update. And again, uh, thank you for powering through, Crystal. Yep, thank you. Um, the first thing I have is Mayor Sexton is stepping down as the mm -hmm. mayor of Burlington. I want to recognize um, him mm -hmm. as an integral part of Skagit Transit for the last 12 uh, years. I only had the opportunity to work with him for the last year, but I appreciate the support that he provided to me and the agency, and I wish him the best uh, in his future endeavors. With that, I'm going to have Jennifer present him with the plaque because I know how much we all love plaques. Uh. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Sexton. I, I was almost fast enough to get up and take a picture, but you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll take we can take a picture later just to really torture him. Thank you very much. Thank that. you. Okay, on to um, MOA two. So for MOA two, I have some good news and some bad news, which I think you guys are kind of all used to that by now. Um, the good news is that um, construction of phase one is still on track to be completed by April May, and we're still on budget. Um, the new architect is finishing up the de design phases for two and three, and they should be completed by July. As a reminder, this only takes us to 90% of the design phase. We will have the architect take the design to 100% once we get pre-award authority on the grant that will pay for the remain remainder of the design. We plan to go out to bid in August and award a contract in October and issue the notice to proceed in November for the actual construction um, contract. I had hoped to combine phases two and three into one phase to reduce the cost and completion time. However, a preliminary review of our electrical needs is revealing that we do not have enough power to even meet the needs of building A, not to mention the rest of the that's project. Solar. This, what's that? No, that's okay, sorry. This means that we may be forced to phase out the rest of the project while the infrastructure is installed to meet our electrical demands. As of right now, it looks like the transist transistor is back ordered by about two years. The new architect submitted an application to PSC last week for a formal review, which is expected to take 60 to 90 days to complete. We will work closely with the architect on resolving this issue, and I will keep the board informed accordingly. Any questions on that, on that part of the good news? Uh, questions on that? How many solar panels that, do we need? To that, order? That, that was the uh, comment that I, that we just had. Uh, oh, I'm, late, meeting, I'm late on the game. In this board meeting, we had a solarized gadget here, and so that was. So, Commissioner Janicki, that is actually part of it. One of the new um, um, environmental requirements are that we add. Um, I think it's six or seven. It's depending on how many parking stalls that we have. So for us, I believe it's six or seven um, electrical charging infrastructures for electric vehicles. And we also have to add X amount of number of um, solar panels. We don't have that number yet, but that's something that the new architect is working on. But again, um, yeah, we don't have the electrical infrastructure to be able to handle that just yet. So, Crystal, you said that's a requirement. A re is this a new energy requirement or what kind of requirement is that? It, it's a new, it's part of the new energy code. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we also received the cost estimate for phases two and three last week, which is coming in at about $35 million, six more, six million more than what was projected when the cost estimates were completed in 2023. And that was a cost estimate by by us working with the, um, it wasn't a formal cost estimate. It was just us working with the previous architect to determine what the escalated cost would be, was gonna be. Um, this is due to supply chain issues, which are still impacting a majority of the industry. Labor costs in con the construction industry has have also gone up significantly, primarily due to labor shortages. Some of that increase was also due to the new energy codes that we just discussed that require a minimum number of electrical chargers and solar panels that must be functional by the end of, they think phase two, but maybe phase three. The, the, the uh, architect is working on finding that answer out. 
Um, that will be determined in the formal electrical review mentioned above. In addition to the $6 million in project overruns, we will not be getting the $5 million Move Ahead Washington grants that we were budgeting for phases three until 2031. Now it's programmed for 2031. We are hoping to be done with most of MOA2 by then, but we'll still be able to use the Move Ahead Washington funds for additional um, electrical charging, electric buses, or any other needs to complete uh, MOA2. To offset the $6 million in increases and the loss of the $5 million in Move Ahead Washington grant, we will be asking for $19.5 million from the RAISE grant, the Bus and Bus Facilities grant, and the Lower No Emissions grant. We will only be awarded funds from one grant. The RAISE will fund 100% if we get it, Bus and Bus Facilities or the Low No always um, fund, they never fund the full amount. Um, we have sent out a letter of support requesting to request to all of you a few weeks ago asking for support for the nine million dollars in the raise grant and are now asking for that letter of support port be modified to reflect the new ask of 19.5 million dollars if you haven't done so already i'm respectfully requesting that all of you please update your letters and send them back to me or marcy with the new request i also need to share with the board that mediation for the original architect has been rescheduled from march 15th to september 9th the architect's attorney requested additional time to review the report from the expert that our attorney hired, and September 9th was the first available rescheduled date. We are on a list, a waiting list in case other cases get postponed as well. This may not necessarily be a bad thing because the new architect have discovered at least two additional items um, that we that are they are deeming errors and omissions from the original architect, and we will be trying to include those into the mediation request as well. Any questions on MOA2? Questions? Okay, okay. moving on. Um, I wanted to touch on recruitments really quickly. I'm happy to report that we have filled our grants manager position. She started this week and will be working remotely for a few weeks until she can move here from Spokane. We have job offered a candidate for the operations manager position. She comes with many years of experience in school bus transportation. We think she'll be a good fit in, a, in addition to our team. She is slated to start March 1st. We have hired a um, recruiting firm Prothman to do the recruitment for our director of finance position. The position has been posted and we have received a number of resumes so far. The first review will be March 10th. Um, as the gentleman earlier stated, Brad Windler gave his two week notice last week. We have posted for his position already and have had um, several candidates apply. We're hoping to get this position filled quickly, especially since we're in the middle of our long range, long range planning study. Public outreach for that starts in late March and continues through April. <laughs> Any questions on recruitment? Questions? All right. Okay, Anything climate, else? I only have oh. two more. Two more things. Climate Commitment Act. As I've shared with the board already, we are in jeopardy of losing funding from the Climate Commitment Act, um, as are some of you. I do have some good news on that front. The Washington State Transportation Association has been conducting some independent polls from Washington residents, and they're only coming in at about 40%. This means that only 40% of individuals polled are uh, voting to pass Initiative 2117. For that reason, we, the WISTA board, which I sit on, authorize the executive director to spend several hundred thousand dollars to hire a consultant to create some very targeted marketing and educational information that we can put on our websites and buses uh, and disseminate through, uh, throughout the community. I encourage all of you to help us educate the citizens of Skagit County, as well as um, about the effects of 2117 passing. Uh, I'm happy to pass along the educational materials from the consultant uh, once I receive it. Any questions on that? So Chris, yeah. so the 2117 initiative is, could you, what is that again? It's to repeal the, cli the Climate Commitment Act. And so the Climate Commitment Act get, it did a couple of things for us. It gave us um, TSG money, transit support grant money of about uh, 1.7 million dollars every biennium, I want to say. 
and it gave us a bump in our state special needs grants of about $1.4 million per biennium. So the transit support grants was the grant that allowed it. Actually, it's a requirement. We have to offer free fare for youth from zero up to 18. And then the um, state special needs grant helps us with um, funding for paratransit and such. So if we if we lose that that funding, which is about $4 million per biennium, um, we would lose approximately $4 million every four years, every, every biennium, every two years. Is this going out for a vote in November? Is that when this it, is? Yep. This is yes, that's correct. It goes out to the voters in November. All right. Any uh, Anything else? Uh, I have one more thing. Okay. If there's nothing on, if there's no questions on that, I just wanted to, um, most if all of you know that I attended the um, APTA, the American Public Transportation Association CEO conference this last weekend. It was Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I came home late, late Monday night. Um, and I just wanted to share a couple of the highlights from that. Um, the entire industry is still experiencing escalated project costs. And a lot of the numbers that I gave, that I threw out earlier, I didn't actually give a lot of numbers, but they did like, um, in terms of project cost overruns and um, um, having difficulty hiring and recruiting and getting skilled construction, that that came from this conference that I went to. Um, anyways, the entire industry is still experiencing escalated project cost and difficulty finding skilled and educated candidates to fill positions. Many colleagues at the conference reported positions being open for many months, which we've experienced, and often filling positions with candidates that do not meet the minimum qualifications just to get positions filled. Uh, another takeaway was ridership. Public transit ridership varies um, between agencies. Some have seen increases that have, have exceeded their pre-pandemic levels. Others are as low as 60% still. As you can see from the ridership report attached to, our, the, to your packet, our ridership is coming in about 60% for fixed route and 90%, actually I think it's about 92% for paratransit. It will be difficult to judge fair revenue since we are now offering free rides for youth up to age 18. While some individual agencies have adopted the same fare structure, I believe we are the only state to have adopted it. Um, couple more things. Based on feedback from colleagues, none of the states have quite figured out how they are going to handle the electrical needs for going all for all electric. There were some great discussions about electric versus hydrogen buses and how different agencies are moving forward with zero emissions vehicles. And lastly, bus manufacturing for public transit agencies is in trouble. About 10 years, we had 13 different bus manufacturers that we could purchase, purchase buses from, and we are now down to two. Most have gone bankrupt. The FTA is urging transit agencies to either prepay for some bus purchases or issue prog progress payments, much like we do on construction projects. Agencies that choose to do that will be covered by shorty bonds in the event that one of the two remaining manufacturers go out of business during a bus build. Skagit Transit will likely be issuing advance or progress, progress payments for buses moving forward. Um, in general, this was a jam-packed conference that was full of what is happening in training and public transportation. And I found the content very useful for me and the agency. And I want to thank the board's support for allowing me to, to attend this conference. Um, the networking is also very invaluable. So thank you for that. And that's all I have. All right. Thank you. Uh, I've got next up is 7B, which is CAC February report. I know it's in the packet and I don't see Judy. I don't know if, sorry, I don't recognize everybody's names yet. If anybody else was going to give that report. But it's in your packet and you can read it. The question. Uh, yeah, uh, Commissioner Janke. Yeah, since Judy isn't going to be talking. Um, Crystal, there's a couple of events coming up. One this weekend that is in the CAC, but that stuff the bus. Um, will, will transit folks be at Helping Hands when that is going on? And I heard that Dick's drive-in is going to be there with a hamburger stand. Yes, um, I believe that Cheryl from our planning and outreach committee will be there. Great. I, I just I, I love seeing the buses there, whether it's at the fairgrounds or wherever stuff the bus happens. I've gone out to Cascade. So anyway, encourage everybody at this board table to make a trip out to Helping Hands. And then on March 9th, you have an all staff meeting. I think Commissioner Browning is planning to attend. Is there um, 
any other notes for the board as to what happens there? Will some of your new um, uh, staff people uh, be in attendance? I don't think the grants manager will be there because, again, she's working remotely until she can move here from Spokane. The new operations manager should be here by then. She's slated to start March 1st. So um, that was the one, Commissioner Janicki, that you and Mayor Boudreaux and Commissioner Wieson attended last year. In instead of doing it in the morning like we did last year, we're doing it in the evening this year so that we can um, accommodate more of our employees' schedules by doing it in the morning last year all of our employees that work in the morning on the weekends weren't able to attend. So um, I'm I'm not sure who's attending yet. Laura, have you gotten any RSVPs? We are going to post it just in case we have quorum. Um, yes, we do have two RSVPs from the board at this point. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, no, thank you for the reminder of the stuff, the bus uh, event. Any other uh Comments from the board. Okay, uh, on to 7C, which is January ridership report. That's also in the packet. Anything we need to add to that, Crystal? No, I gave the highlights. You guys can look at it at your leisure. Okay. Um, all right. And item eight is a closed session or an executive session. So we need to, uh, the board will now meet in an executive session to discuss collective bargaining. Uh, as allowed by RCW 423110G, and the board will be in executive session. I've got 1146, so we'll be in uh, executive session until 1156 is the plan. Yeah. And the board is not expected to take any action, so we'll move into executive session for collective bargaining. Thanks. Okay, I uh, call the uh, meeting back to order uh, at 11.56. There was no action taken. And with the Skagit Board of Directors back in order, I, the no other business before the Skagit Board of Transit, the uh, Board of Directors, I will adjourn the meeting. Thank you. <laughs>